So let's do a proper introduction. What's, what's good, everybody? Uh, Mr. J Hill. It's a conversation series. <laughs> you know why? I just talk to creatives, um, whatever you name it. People that that just have conversations. That's good conversations. You know, I love I love to do this platform because, you know, everybody always want to hear from the celebrities and what they're mm-hmm. doing. But mm-hmm. it's people like us, people like yourself, yeah. that have just better conversations honestly you know what i'm saying so yeah. like why not just have conversations with people like us right. i don't want to say regular people because i know i'm not regular right know, yeah I'm not, I'm not regular right so it's like <laughs> yeah. whoever sorry for them but yeah. we ain't regular but yeah i just like to have conversations with people that are reachable if that makes sense yes um so we have brianna in the building yes thank you for having me no nah, thank you for uh, having me this yes. is a beautiful place thank you thank you um, welcome to prince george's county yeah so it's crazy <laughs> because i live in Prince George's County. Like, on my ID, it says Prince George's County. Oh, really? Yeah, but it's like 30 minutes away. Oh, what city? Uh, Laurel, I think. Oh, okay, yeah, you're in Prince George's County. Not technically, because I, I be, so I just moved out here, so uh, I be hearing people say that's technically not PG County. I don't it depends no on idea. where in Laurel, because some parts will be a different county, okay. depending on where you are in Laurel. But yeah, some parts of it is Prince George's County. Okay, well, speaking of regions and things, mm-hmm. it's only right that we talk about homes and yes. where to move because you're a realtor. Yes. Um, if you want, just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, what made you even jump into that lane of being a realtor. Okay, well, of course, I'm a Maryland realtor, mm-hmm. so anyone looking to buy some invest in Maryland, that's who I assist. But in terms of how I got started, I actually graduated from Mount St. Mary's University, mm-hmm. and I majored in computer science and cybersecurity. So I got my first full-time job, and I was like, I don't like this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is boring. I'm just sitting at a desk all day, and I'm like, I'm the type of person that wants to talk to people. I like to help people. So I was just trying to look and see what career would be best for me. Mm-hmm. So then I got into real estate. I was I started researching real estate, and I was like, okay, I think I could do that. I'm going to be talking to people on a regular. Um, I'll be helping them as well. So I think this would be a good fit for me. So I took the class, got my license, and I'm here now. So did how much research did you do on, like, real estate before you – jumped in I yeah. guess like you- not a lot at all so for me I, I don't take a long time to think about things I'm like okay if I want to do something this matches what I'm looking to do let me just Let's jump into it, it. yeah <laughs> so I, I'm not in the planning stages for a long time I like to plan and execute so how was so. the like how how was that process of becoming a relative, right? You say you had to take yeah. a class. How long yeah. was the class? Like So that class was actually three months. That was an in person class. Bad. Yeah. It wasn't too bad. And it was twice a week during the evening. That's so it wasn't too, too bad. bad. Yeah. So it was in person. Took that for three months. Once I did that, then I went to take the exam. So it was a state and national exam. That exam by far I graduated college. That was the hardest exam I've ever taken. Did you pass your first time? I didn't. You don't want to know. <laughs> I say, I heard a lot of people say Ooh. they didn't pass that first time. Some no. people say it took you three times. How many times did it take you? It took me. <laughs> it was in the even numbers. It took a. It took. It took a. Uh, it took a lot. Like double digits? No, no, no. We didn't get the double digits, but it was so you know like eight times. Definitely less than eight. Okay. Some people hitting like four or five. Okay. Six. <laughs> but I yeah, mean, but once got I done. got it, I was like, oh my gosh. So that to me, that was one of the most challenging parts. But once I got that, um, once I got the license, I was like, all right. Good. I'm ready to go. Wow. So did you question? Because you're a full you're a full time uh, realtor mm-hmm, right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. When you first started, was you always full time? No. Or with um, of course, because I started with my nine to five, so mm. I was doing um, IT work, and then I was just like, I, I don't like to, I, this is not what I want to do. So that's you know. So I was like, all so right, I'm doing real estate. When you stop uh, your nine to five job and you start focusing uh-huh. more on more being real a, uh, real, mm-hmm. relative full time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me some of the, the pros from it. Did it help you focus more? You know, because a lot of people would say, I want to quit my job and do this, but mm-hmm. it's just not supporting their bills or whatever they have to mm-hmm. take care of at that moment. So yeah. it's like you're kind of scared. But for right. you, when you finally took that step, that leap of, that leap of faith, yeah. like how, how did your life change and how did the career change? So I would say definitely for people who want to jump into real estate, I think a lot of times they say, all right, I want to be my own boss. That's why I want to be in real estate. And yes, you're your own boss. But when you're starting out, you're going to be working more than what you do in your nine to five. So Mm. you're working those eight hours when you're in real estate. It's it's a lot of work. So I would definitely say for that transition, it's okay to, you know, have your nine to five and then use that money that you saved up in order to make that transition. Saving is everything. But I would just want you to know, like, it is more work than what you're doing with your nine to five. So it is it was it was a hustle like from sitting down to a desk for I, I did something called door knocking, which is basically knocking on doors saying, hey, I'm a realtor. Wow. So I was going around buoy knocking on these doors, even in the cold and saying like, hey, this is what I do. If you know anyone looking to purchase, then, you know, I would love to assist. So it was a hustle. <laughs> How was that process for you, though? Like Ooh. Soliciting almost like knocking on people's doors. It saying, was I'm a realtor. soliciting. How it was, was that process? Like. 
<laughs> it was crazy. I, I printed out my flyer, so I would have a flyer with my picture, my information, basically what I do. I would literally knock on the door, say, hey, my name's Brianna Thizard. I'm a local realtor. If you know anyone looking to buy some vests, I would love to assist. And some people, you know, I got cursed out a lot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> some people were like, who's this girl at my door? Some people were really nice. I actually got one client from, from door, one or two clients from door knocking. But I will say, overall, people were kind of weirded out about it. So you wouldn't um, suggest that or... I would suggest it. I think if you do it consistently, you will find the people. How you definitely will. You? Oh, I was consistent. I was doing it Monday through Friday. Sheesh. Yeah. And then mind you, I when I started doing it, it was in the winter time. Oh, so no. I, my hands were all ashy. Oh, no. <laughs> but I was like, I gotta get it. Like if, if this is what I, you know, wanna do, mm -hmm. I really wanna do real estate. I was kinda trying everything. Um, so so yeah, I did that door knock. It was not easy. It was not easy. Cause I'm I'm a nice person. Most people that know me, you know, I'm pretty approachable. So I wasn't used to people cursing me out or like looking at me <laughs> funny. So I was like, dang, like, is it me? But I it mean, is definitely a hard job to yeah. do not open doors. Cause a lot of people, it's like you come into their home and it's like, bro. Mm, right. Mm, 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 like, right. And they think you're a politician. Yeah. And it's just it, it gets it gets weird. I but I will say anybody that is doing door knocking that you definitely want to have somebody with you, mm. especially as a woman. You don't want to go by yourself. I typically went by myself, but I also can see how that's very dangerous. So if you're going with somebody, I mean, if you're doing it, go with somebody. So now you're like three years in a game. Like you're like an OG now almost, right? <sighs> oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. How, how do I'm people learning. look at you now? Like, that's, so what are some so of the different. things that you can't really believe that people call you or like, come to you about advice and like they look yeah. at you like a, 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 a OG almost, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it's definitely weird because when I started, I, when I would post on social media, I feel like nobody was there just mm -hmm. talking to, you know, nobody. But um, till now, I'm having people reach out to me. Hey, I'm looking to purchase a home. I'm looking to sell my home. And it's just like, wow, I really grew from not having anyone to speak to about real estate to people actually reaching out to me and wanting to purchase. Mm. So. So it's been a big shift. Three years in the game. What are some of the things that you learned, like some of the do's and don'ts of just getting into real estate, mm -hmm. uh, being a realtor, mm -hmm. some of the things you did and that you thought probably was a fail that you probably shouldn't have done just to help mm -hmm. young realtors coming in the game? I would definitely say focus on yourself, mm. have your own lane. I think for me, I'm not that I like popcorn success, but I was just like, okay, I'm gonna get in the game. I'm gonna make six figures right off the bat. <laughs> like I had all these goals and that's amazing and you can do that. But I think I was comparing myself a lot to realtors that have been in the game for 10 years. Mm. I didn't even know how long they were in the game for, but I started out, I'm like, you know, I'm doing the same thing. I'm door knocking, I'm doing this. How come I'm not getting um, the same type of success that they're getting? they've been in this game for a long time. So I'm right. comparing my first year to their 10 year. Mm. So I would definitely say focus on what you're doing, focus on your niche, whoever, whether that's first time home buyers, maybe you wanna focus on millennials, maybe you wanna focus on the elderly, like find your niche of people that you wanna focus on, cause that's gonna definitely, you know, help with your marketing, who do you market to, how you market. So I would say stay in your lane and then figure out your niche. That's gonna be the biggest thing. And also patience, right? Like oh, um, that's that's huge. But Whew. speaking of niches, right? I mm -hmm. feel like trying to find your niche, niche, however you would like to say it, mm -hmm. right? Sometimes that's easier said than done, right? Because what you yes. might want to be your niche may yes. not be your niche, yeah. right? How do you find your niche in in such a competitive field? Yeah, I would definitely say that's hard. So for me, I was like, okay, I want to go, um, I want my clientele to be people who already have homes so that I can just sell their homes. So I mm, wanted people who were in like the smart. 35 plus range, but majority of the people were in their early 20s. And I was like, dang, like, you know, it, what should I do in terms of marketing? And I just, those are just the, the people that I attracted. And then when I was working with them, I just love working with them. So right now I would definitely say my niche right now is the younger, um, younger people, I would say people who are just graduating college, I'm getting a lot of people who are graduating college who worked on their credit score while they were in school and also their savings. So by the time they're done, they're like, all right, I'm ready to buy a house. Mm. So I would say people in their mid twenties, early thirties, that's my range right now. But you had to be open to that, right? Because but you, you had know, to, exactly. Finding an issue, you came in like, I want my I want my audience exactly. to be this. Exactly, exactly. And that's why I was doing the door else. knocking, yep. Right, and right. it's like, okay, mm -hmm. I want it to be this, but it's not that. So let me focus on what it actually is, right? right if that makes right. sense. Yeah, man, you're talking about um, college students coming out of college. Credit yeah. is like is a huge thing. Yeah, let's talk about it, right? Like, yeah. so I, I guess these are some of the questions that people probably ask you on a regular. Yeah, do you have to have a specific credit score to get a home? So it and definitely varies. It var It depends. So I'll use that. Right now, what uh, most loan officers are approving are in the lower 600. So you'll see 620. Mm. Um, some people are, some loan officers are, 
possibly doing lower than 600, um, but right now it was saying the 620 range in terms of like credit score, but that depends on which route you're taking. It also depends Let's on what program. That. Yeah, okay. so it depends. So maybe if you wanna do the Home Partners of America, which is the rent to own program, where they accept people who are in the 580s, so in the higher 500s. So it just depends on what program you're gonna, um, you're going to use in order to purchase but i would definitely say the biggest thing is connecting with the loan officer like people want to wait until they have perfect credit scores until they start with the process meet with that loan officer so they can direct you and say okay you know what with your credit score if you're looking to purchase in the next six months these are the programs that you qualify for and this is the programs that you need to utilize in order for you to purchase a home so maybe you're doing conventional or fha or maybe you're doing the rent to own program maybe you're doing um, the naca program for first time home buyers so it depends, but I would say six. All right, so you move on a little too fast. <laughs> I know, so me. that's a lot of information. All right, so let's start off with um, uh -huh. you said the loan officer, right? Yes. So do if I'm trying to purchase a home, am I reaching out to a home um, a loan officer first or a realtor? What's the first thing I, I say? Realtor. Out? I say realtor. So what I do is when I talk, when I meet my clients, mm -hmm. typically most of my clientele actually comes from social media. So when I meet with my clientele, we go through a needs and wants analysis, basically like what are you looking for? What do you need in your house? Once we go from there, I go through the whole home buying process. Mm -hmm. And then from there I say, okay, now I'm going to connect you with the loan officer and here are the questions that you need to ask. So that instead of them going to the loan officer first, they already have an idea of the process. And if they have more questions for the loan officer, they can ask, but also they know what questions to ask. Okay. So the main thing I, I tell them is, okay, when you speak with that loan officer, when they check your credit score, make sure that that credit score is you know sufficient in order for you to be approved for a home loan. So talk about credit score, how much money you need to have saved, what does your down payment look like, what does your closing cost look like, what programs do you actually qualify in order to purchase. So, so yeah. these things come, so when, so when I hear you say um, you go through the entire like home buying process, yeah. I'm thinking credit score i'm thinking everything you said to talk to at the uh the um the loan officer with i yeah. think i'm talking to you with about oh so no how to say, i guess i haven't misconstrued so what yeah what are we actually talking about if i come to the realtor you mm -hmm. say you go through the whole process what is that yeah. process so that process is going to be like okay I, I always say the first step is to find your realtor i'm going to be working with you from now until you close on your home okay. then i basically say okay then you're connect going to connect with the loan officer hear the information that the loan officer is going to give you but before we get to the loan officer uh -huh. how was that process from me to you from from me looking for a home to mm -hmm. realtor before we get to the loan officer. How, what oh, is that process? Oh, in terms of what I'm telling them? What are we telling me? What are, What am I learning from you? What what are the information uh, that I'm basically you're you? you're learning the whole process mm. so you're going to learn again like what i'm what i'm going to provide for you as a realtor how i'm going to be representing you but i'm also going to let you know when you do speak to that loan officer here's the information but what happens after that mm. so when we go to look at homes i'm going to tell you what type of market we're in right now because right now we are in a very competitive seller's market mm. so that once you speak to that loan officer and you get approved you already have an idea of what's next so you're not confused okay what are we doing next you know okay i have my realtor these are her services. This is how she's going to provide value to me. I already have an idea of what the market looks like. Now I'm meeting with the loan officer. Like I'm already, I already know what's going on. Okay. So I guess I'll, I'll Hey, Brianna, this is Jay. I'm looking to buy a house. So mm -hmm. I guess we shop houses. Um, okay. I'm glad you said that. So no, we do not go and shop for houses until one, you sign a buyer's agreement. And that's basically saying that I represent you as a realtor. Mm. And then from there, another thing is um, you want to get that pre-approval or pre-qualification from that loan officer. So when you fill out your loan application, that information, with that information, the loan officer is going to say, this is how much you're pre-approved for based off of um, everything that you put down on your loan application. Okay. So when I get that sales price, then we start looking at homes. Cause what I don't want to happen is we go out to see homes, we see beautiful homes, you can't even write an offer on it. Mm. You, so we will know what you can afford based off of what the loan officer gives us. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's say if I guess, I don't know, my my credit is on mm -hmm. the lower side, right? Uh -huh. 580, 600. Mm -hmm. Then you could suggest a uh, rent to own. And yes, then we exactly. Could go that, that route. And then we can go that route. So you would still be going through a loan officer, but it would be through their program. Wow, that's dope. Yes. How, how many people do you um, you have to go that route with when it comes to renting to own? Like how mm -hmm. how often does how normal is that for you? I do see it now and again. A lot of times when people have lower credit scores, and I you know tell them, hey, you can do the rent to own program. Sometimes they're like, you know what, I just want to work on my credit and go the tradi traditional route. So that's okay. So majority of people do wait 
Um, but then there's some people who say, you know, I'll do the rent to own program. I'll look into it. And sometimes they get into it and they're like, I don't like the homes that are available. I just want to continue to work on my credit. So okay. it depends. So I'm assuming like with the rent to own is not a lot of homes that people would want primarily, I guess. No, it's definitely homes that people will want, but your, your options are, might be a little more Limited. narrow because it has to be with that program. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm learning something. Yeah, I'm learning something. Yeah. Okay. So I, right. I have a, so in today's society with the pandemic, right? I've been hearing a lot of, I've been hearing a lot of people say this is like one of the perfect times to buy a home. Yeah. Why is that? I would definitely say because of the low interest rates. So mm. that's why a lot of people are purchasing. I know a lot of people had the idea of being becoming a homeowner. So people have been saving, people have been working on their credit score. And even with the interest rates are low, this is definitely a perfect time to purchase a home. Okay. So yeah. when, when, because because you're in the field, I really don't know nothing. So like yeah. literally this conversation is really like yeah. teaching me a lot as well. Yeah. Hopefully it helps the audience as well, but I'm pretty sure if I'm not the only one with these questions. Mm-hmm. Is it a projected time or... Yeah, is it a projected time when mm-hmm. the rates are looking to go back up? Or do we you know that? don't know. We don't know. So we should yeah. hop on it like we, ASAP. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's why in every market that there's in real estate, there's always opportunity. So this is absolutely the opportunity right now in real estate. So, yeah, definitely hop on it. But I also want to talk to people who have a home who are looking to sell because mm. right now it's a seller's market. So that means there are not many homes, you know, on the market right now. So there's low inventory, but there's a lot of people looking to purchase. So that's why it's super competitive right now. So not many homes, but a lot of people looking to buy. So oh, wow. as a seller you people are going way over asking price so you want if you can sell your home right now and you've been thinking about selling your home right now you definitely want to sell i'm glad you brought that up let's talk about um you know i'm not really too sure about this but i know at one point in time Mm -hmm. i was so gun hold on like buying a house i want this house i want to be a beautiful home yeah and as i got older i understood that a lot of times your first home isn't like the home that you're staying in forever right it's like probably an investment home yes what do you say to those people that's coming and looking for the perfect home to buy yes. when they when this is their first home and then more than likely mm-hmm. they're going to sell their first home? Right. What do you say to those people that's, I that's stuck on trying to get that right. perfect home? Yeah, so I definitely say, what's your why? I want to know why. Mm. Why do you want to purchase this home? I promise you, almost everyone says generational wealth. I want to build generational <laughs> generational wealth. So when we go and look at houses and they're like, okay, the sinks don't look like this and they don't have that, I say, okay, look, we are here because we want to we want to build generational wealth. Now that doesn't mean the house has to doesn't have um, any plumbing or anything like that. I'm not saying that, but just know that over time you can change what your house looks like. So maybe mm. you don't like what the kitchen looks like. All right, over time you can make um, renovations in your home to make it look exactly what you want it to look like. And again, if we're talking about generational wealth, that house you can pass down to your kids, you know? Or maybe you say, you know what? I want to move into a bigger home. I want to use this house as an investment property. So you have tenants living in there. Mm. So definitely your first home doesn't have to be your dream home. You can change it with renovations or you can turn it into an investment property. So it's, it doesn't have to have every single thing. You want it to be nice now. You want it to be something that you feel like you can work with because I want you to be happy when you close on your home. But just know that this is not it. You will buy another home. Wow. I'm learning so mm-hmm. much right now. Yeah. So even in today's society with so many entrepreneurs, right? Like everybody's yeah. looking for the next come up, the next flip. Yeah. You see a lot of people purchasing homes and trying to flip them. How easy is that? Or how hard is it? I would definitely say it's easy. I would say majority of people that I meet that are looking to invest in a home are looking in Baltimore. I'm seeing a shift where Baltimore is the hot spot. Um, so I definitely say it's, it's not challenging. I mean, it, it still is a seller's market. So, of course, there are a lot of investors looking to purchase an investment property. But the, it's definitely out there. It's an opportunity for investors. Mm. I'm working with investors now, and is you know there's opportunity. How much there. of your work do you do in Baltimore? That's a good question. I will say right now I have currently three to four people that I'm working with that are just specifically for investors Mm. um, that are in Baltimore. Now, in terms of um, clientele that are investors who are just looking to purchase, I I don't know the exact number, but I would say quite a few. So I have people who are like, I'm thinking about PG or I'm thinking about Baltimore and Montgomery County. So there's some people that are kind of all over. So I'm from Baltimore and that's crazy. I was having this conversation with... um this is weird. It's going to be a weird flex. I was having this conversation with 21 Savage on. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of weird, right? right? I had to put that out there because I wasn't trying to flex. But yeah. I was having this conversation with uh, 21 Savage on Clubhouse. Yeah. And he was saying, like, how he wouldn't move to Baltimore or he wouldn't invest in Baltimore. And I was like, man, okay. you're crazy. Like, that's yeah. the perfect place to invest. Uh-huh. Um, I feel like eventually it's going to become 
one of the, the nicer cities because there's so yes. much property there that's so cheap and you can invest right. in Baltimore and, and build it up and make it look nice. Just mm-hmm. by being a realtor, how much knowledge do you know about that? And how could you? How would you speak about Baltimore and just the future of the city when it comes to real estate and homes? Right. I would definitely say look at the demographic. I'm surprised you actually said that because a lot of investors are moving to, you know, looking to invest in Baltimore. I would definitely say it is on the come up. Mm. Some areas, especially um, that I go to in Baltimore, where it was, it looked a lot different. <laughs> when I go there now, I see the demographic is more diverse. There's more white people. There's more Asian people. You have black people. It's just like such a big mix mm. because of what's happening is a lot of tech companies are coming here. Uh, more business opportunities are coming here. So people are, you know, going to invest their money here. If people wow. are moving this way because of opportunities. Then the whole community is definitely going to change. So I would say, there's absolutely opportunity, especially with the low prices in homes. A lot of people are paying cash for them. So if you can pay cash, cash for a property over time, it will appreciate. Um, and then that community changes. You'll definitely be, be making, you know, a return on your investment. So, wow. yeah. So you had me come to Bowie. Oh, this is a beautiful <laughs> place. Thank I you. I pulled up and I was like, sheesh. Yeah. So we're talking about these, the bigger houses, yeah. right? How much are we looking at? Like on in average, terms of I this guess. price point, yeah. Well, people can't see the house, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> but I, I, I would call yeah. this the bigger. How, how many square footage is this? Do you know? Oh, I don't know the answer to that. Like, I don't know lot. the answer <laughs> to that. But I would say, in terms of this area, I would say one point one million and one point two. Okay. Yeah. So when I hear one point two million dollars, I hear a lot of money. <laughs> you hear like, a lot of money. It goes like crazy, but. Yeah. Being a realist, I'm pretty sure you've dealt with a lot of people that probably bought houses for a million dollars. Probably a lot of times. Uh-huh. How easy is that to actually get when it comes to having a loan? Or not so, easy, or how hard? How hard or easy? Is it, it depends on your. It depends on your finances. So mm. if you have that, and it's not just a um, high credit score with this one. Okay. So if you of course have me. a high credit Talk score, that's great. But in terms of your saving, like how much money are you able to put down on the property? Are you able to just pull out fifty k mm. for a home? If you're not able to do that, you know you you know you can't just purchase a million dollar house because your credit score is eight hundred. Okay? okay, like if you don't have any money saved, another thing that people don't look into is debt to income ratio that plays a huge role what is that Please debt to me. income ratio so basically that means the income that you make um and the debt that you have they basically compare the two so some people especially a lot of people that i work with that are first-time home buyers they have student loan debt mm. so they're making maybe 50k their student loan is 75k so Damn. that's gonna affect what they get approved for and that's what you call debt to income ratio now you might have little debt maybe you have 10k in debt and you're making 90k you know so that that would just be that debt to income ratio but it wouldn't negatively affect you because of you know how low can your i debt just is. lie about my debt or no you can lie about your debt so that will help me or oh oh I thought you meant right. Now. I thought you were about to give me a scenario. No, I'm Don't saying. lie on your debt. No, I mean you can't. You can't really lie on because your loan officer is gonna pull okay. all your information. Okay. So one I'm thing I will curious. say about that: some people do lie about their debt, and then the loan officer pulls information. They're like, uh, you know, what's going on? You know, mm. you said this, and this is what the numbers are looking like. So, you know, just be honest. We're gonna see it anyway. So, so on average, you're looking at let's say a million dollar home, right? Um, I have a 720 credit score. Mm-hmm. I'm looking to have, I'm going to have to pull out maybe $50,000 uh-huh. in, in like cash uh-huh. like in the bank. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it, it, it depends on maybe there's an auction. Uh, it depends on what type of, maybe it's a foreclosure. Mm. It definitely will depend, but that would definitely be a question for the loan officer based on the sales type of the home. You, that they would determine how much money you have to put down for it. So, okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I learned mm-hmm. a lot in this. Yes. There were some things that you wanted to touch on. Um, I don't know if we touched on it. I always like to extend. Yeah, the, uh, I would definitely say Prince George's County as a whole. Mm. That's um, I've lived here for a very long time. So definitely look at Prince <laughs> I, George's yeah, County. Yeah, I love okay. I love my I love my county. So mm. I've been here. So I'm originally from New York, actually. I'm originally from New York, and then moved here when I was three years old. So I basically say this is this is it, Prince yeah, George's County. Yep. So I've been living in Bowie forever. I don't plan on leaving. <laughs> I definitely invest in other places, but I love where I live. It's a lot of black excellence all around, for sure. Um, a lot of opportunity here. A lot of small business, you know, small businesses that I've partnered with and made connections with. So it feels like home. 
Mm. Yeah. So you definitely would say like tell people to come to Prince George's County. Well, I well yeah, I mean I rep Prince George's County all day, <laughs> but you know I do when I have my clientele because sometimes they're like, do you only help people in Prince George's County? I definitely don't. Anywhere in Maryland, the only part of Maryland I kind of you know don't work too much in it will be Ocean City, Maryland. Okay. At that point, I will give you a referral because I know agents all over. So, but any other place in Maryland. So yeah. if anybody want a house, pretty much anywhere in Maryland, they can exactly. call you. Hey, Brianna, I yes. want this house. Don't just think that you're stuck. Because I feel like that's a lot of things you see. Um, you'll see somebody selling homes in, mm -hmm. a, in, in a particular place, mm -hmm. and you'll be somewhere else and be like, ah, I would call yeah. them, but they only Let out know there. That but that's area. not true. You see that right. you could do it mm -hmm. pretty much anywhere yeah, in Maryland. Yeah, you could do it anywhere. I learned a lot. Now you got me thinking, like, I need to, like, go pick my get my credit up so I can get, get your credit up. <laughs> I need to get me like a 1.2 million dollar home yeah you. I'm sure I'm sure you're not far from that because <laughs> you with the podcast and everything I'm sure hey. you'd be fine mm -hmm. but now I appreciate the sit down yeah um, it's a great conversation Thank I learned, so I learned a lot hopefully uh the audience learned a lot uh, yeah. if you want just look into that camera now okay. and tell them your Instagram and how okay. to contact you and everything Okay, well, you can follow me on Instagram at Brianna, B R I A N A, dot realtor. You can call me, text me at 301 379 0831, and then I have my contact information on my Instagram page. So, thank you. Uh, again, I appreciate you for having me. Um, great okay. conversation, Mr. J Hill, Brianna. Um, thank that's you. That's all we got. It's a wrap. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you. No problem.